Uh, Bob Richards is joining us here this morning, and uh, I think this last weekend, maybe it's one of those ones where your job is a little bit more difficult, sitting through the movies yes, that you sat through. Yes, definitely, <laughs> definitely hard to sit through some of these movies, but uh, many people did sit through the movies. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Seuss uh, beat the Goliath, though. The Lorax held onto the top spot at the box office with $39.1 million, while the mega movie John Carter flopped. It made just $30.6 million for second place. Not good for a movie that cost upwards of $400 million to make and market. Project X was third. Silent House was fourth with just over $7 million. And Eddie Murphy's A Thousand Words tanked with just $6.4 million for sixth place. Friends with Kids, now at the flicks, starts out very funny, loses a little steam, and then gets mired in drama before recovering. Writer-director star Jennifer Westfeld is terrific and shows she's a serious comedic force and is very talented, crafting a movie that is engaging and mostly enjoyable. The biggest surprise here in Chris is Kristen Wiig, who everyone knows is hilarious, but she displays some serious acting chops. Her performance is the best in the film. It's an unconventionally done, conventional story. Three and a half stars out of five. One of the most expensive movies ever made, the blandly named John Carter, is as bland as its name. Yes, it's also tedious, dry, hard to follow, unintelligible, and bloated, featuring so much gibberish you have no idea what they're talking about. I was lost for much of the film. What you can understand is silly. The special effects are okay, but it's not worth seeing in 3D. It's not a horrible film, it's just not exceptional. If they'd spent half as much money, it still would have been too much. They spent a lot, but you shouldn't spend any more than a buck to see John Carter. Two and a half stars out of five. Silent House stars the talented Elizabeth Olsen, who is the best part of this confused film. The film's gimmick is it's told in what is supposed to appear as a single uninterrupted shot, although it isn't. The gimmick is also its weakness. It focuses on Olsen for the most part, and with a single perspective looking at her, it's very hard to tell what's going on. She reacts, but we don't know to what. As a result, we feel oddly disconnected. It takes a long time to get going, and the ending is a doozy, and not in a good way. I wasn't a fan. Two stars out of five. I wish the producers of A Thousand Words had used two words before the production began. No thanks. But they did make this unfunny, cringe-inducing heap of pseudo-spiritual nonsense. Eddie Murphy used to be funny. Used to be. Here, he is obnoxious and unlikable, mugging for the camera, rolling his eyes and pantomiming like it's charades night at the Happy Steak Bar and Grill. There's a reason a thousand words has been sitting on the shelf for four years. It won't take a thousand words to tell you about Eddie Murphy's latest try at comedy. Nope, it'll just take one. Terrible. One star out of five. For my reviews, a look at this week's DVD and Blu-ray releases and more, head over to my website, bobrichardsmoviereviews.com, or link to it at kivitv.com. You may have to go back and watch some old Eddie Movie Murphys this week, just to get the <laughs> good taste back in your mouth, I guess. Uh, that's a long time ago. Were, were you a fan of his older stuff? <laughs> of his earlier stuff, absolutely. Okay. Loved Beverly Hills Cop and some of those early movies, but uh, lately he's just not done well. And it seems like part of it may be that movie itself, too, the concept or yeah, I think it's I just know, a miss from the beginning. Yeah. All right. Not a great weekend at movies. Thanks so much for being with us, Bob. <laughs>